In one click, Opus Clip can generate dozens of social media clips from a long form YouTube video link. And you can customize it further or better yet, you can export it directly to Premiere Pro for more tweaking. But the question is, are these clips actually useful? Is Opus actually worth your time to look into? Or is it better just to record separate content specifically for your shorts? No better way to find out than to jump on in. So what even is Opus Clip? It's a short form video clipping tool powered by OpenAI. But by short, they mean that you can clip clips up to 15 minutes in length. That means if you have an hour long video, you can make multiple 15 minute clips if you wanted to. But in our case for shorts, we're talking about 60 seconds or less. But wait a minute. Who is Opus Clip for? Here to explain is Professor Gal. If your goal on YouTube is to attract more views to your long form content, then Opus is great for generating fast clips of your long form content. Because now on YouTube, when you upload a short, you can tag a related long form video. So people can easily click on that and go and watch the long form. And the reason why you want people to watch the long form content is for two reasons. One, it's where the money's at. That's where the ad revenue is. And money is important to live. Life things, important. And two, it's about the conversation. When you're just making a short, you know, people are just scrubbing past. Right here, right now, this is long form. We're having a conversation. We're having a connection. So shorts are still important because they bring more people to your videos to subscribe. But of course, it's not all about subscribers. The most important thing is the views because you can have subscribers. But if nobody's watching, then, well, quite frankly, What's the point? That's all I have to say. Back to you, Gal. Thanks, Professor Gal. As always, very enlightening. All right, so now let's see if we can turn some of my older videos and repurpose them into smaller clips. Also, you can follow along with the Opus Clip free plan, or you can sign up for a free trial if you want to get all of the features. I've dropped my affiliate link to Opus Clip down below, and when you use that, it helps support the channel. In the Opus Clip dashboard here, I just need to paste in a link to my YouTube video in this box. But before I hit get clips in one click, let's check out some more of these options here that just popped up. Let's start with the language options. They got a bunch here to choose from, but we're sticking with English, of course. And below that, I can pick the style of the captions. I can also create a custom preset up here in the brand template. What's interesting to note is that we get an option to generate captions for the whole video and not just the clips. So even if I didn't want clips at all, I could use Opus as just a video captioning tool. Here we can pick the genre of our video so that way the AI can understand our video better. Next, we have a slider to adjust how much of our long video we want to be turned into the clips. If I trim out some of the video, you'll see that the credit usage actually goes down, which is quite useful because this is a great way to save on credits. Now it's important to note that it doesn't work great with gaming style videos to create shorts because it works off the dialogue in the transcript that the AI generates. So if there's not a lot of dialogue, it can't really make good shorts from that. Right now it does factor in speaker location and mood, but I did talk to Opus Clip and they're working on a more advanced AI model that can factor in other things when making the shorts. So hopefully they'll have that out in the summer. And finally, here I can pick the preferred clip length. And since I'm planning to post all of these as YouTube shorts, I'm going to pick all of these options that are not over 60 seconds. The last option is optional, but I could write in, you know, keywords here and topics for the video that I think would be potential good clips, but I'm just going to leave it blank to see how it performs without that. And finally here we can click the one click button. So Opus will take its time and they will email me when it's done. In our experience of using Opus here, it usually only uses about half the time that it estimates. So no one's completely plain in here. So after about seven minutes of waiting, we have 14 clips now waiting for us. And remember, this came from a nine minute video. Or if somebody, you know, has the resources to get like a, a nice camera or invest in a software, what would you recommend in those two cases, beginner versus pro? Yeah, well, beginner wise, again, just a webcam. Now you might be wondering what's with all of this text here on screen? Well, 
let me tell you. So one of the standout features of Opus is their virality score, which uses the power of OpenAI, of course. So Open will give scores and comments on each clip here so I can see which video has a good hook or is it following any current trends. They even help you come up with a catchy title. This is still useful information, but remember that content is king and it's important to watch through these clips to see if it matches the brand or the ideas and topics that I'm going for that I want to post on the channel especially some of the titles. Some of them don't really fit the video super well. Create a great opportunity with something like OBS and you can do tutorials. You could do real-time tutorials, share your screen, show what you're doing. But the format here and the wording of their titles is no doubt a great starting point. Now, of course, we need to answer the most important question of the video. How many of these clips are actually useful? So after going through all 14 clips, I can confidently say that about six of these turned out to be actually useful. Now, some of these are great off the bat, but a few of them need some more tweaking. Something to keep in mind here is that I'm using a straight up interview style video for this generation. And after playing around with Opus Clips competitor tools, it's become clear that the AI works better with conversational style content like podcasts. And that's why I chose to use this video of an interview that I did with Sean Cannell from Think Media. But to put it to the test, I also tried out different styles of content inside of Opus. For example, I tried generating clips from this old video tutorial on how to do a dolly zoom vertigo effect. And Opus was able to turn this six minute video into nine clips with about three usable ones. Next, I brought in my 100K mistake video, which isn't an interview, it's just me talking straight to camera, kind of like a vlog style. And this is about a nine minute video. And Opus was able to generate 10 clips here with about three to four of them actually being considered usable. So although it's clear that AI has a better time finding short clips from podcasty style videos, it still did a good job at finding content from these different styles. And after all, I usually only post one or two maybe shorts from each long form. So there's still plenty to start from here. And by the way, Hello, welcome friend to Premiere Gal. If you're new here, we post weekly video editing content, whether it's me showing you how to do a trick in Premiere Pro or After Effects. Sometimes we demo new production tools that are powered by AI, just like Opus here. So thanks to our friends over at Opus for sponsoring today's video. They didn't tell me what to say here, I promise. This is an honest review, but thank you so much for reaching out because I'm always, always curious to see, you know, what else is new out there and to see how it can help you guys create better content. If this video is helping you out and you want some more short form related editing content, drop a phone emoji with the hand down below. Also very exciting, I have my own Gal Toolkit extension for Premiere Pro with over 1500 different effects. So if you're looking for custom presets, titles, transitions, animated emojis, overlays, it has it all there nightly, nightly, nicely stacked up in inside of the extension, just drag and drop it and apply it to your timeline. I've dropped a link just down below if you wanna try that out. All right, let's see what else Opus has up their sleeves. For the clips that are ready to go, I can easily just download the HD version using this button. Or since I have the pro plan, I could just link my socials to Opus here and use the scheduler here to schedule the post for me, which is very convenient if you post to multiple platforms at the same time. But as I said before, some of these clips are not publishing ready. They are shy. We need to do some work. To refine it, we have two options. We can export the clip to Premiere Pro as an XML to go wild and crazy in Premiere, which is normally what I would want to do because it's what I'm most comfortable in. But after checking out their built-in editor, I was super surprised. It has way more options than I expected. So let's click edit clip. The first thing you'll see here on top is the option to remove filler words and pauses, but luckily enough, there isn't any. Now under here is where I can look through the transcript and fix any incorrect words, or I can just remove it. I can also have emojis pop up at any specific words. But the best part here is being able to adjust the starting and ending point of the video. So if the video doesn't end where I'd like it to, I can click on these crossed out words, which are parts of the long video that isn't included in the clip and hit set as 
end. Jumping over to the design tab, this is where things get pretty crazy. So buckle up those seatbelt kids. So first let's adjust the layout. Maybe I want my clips to be in the landscape layout instead. We don't wanna do that. We're sticking with the portrait. The layout preferences let me choose how I want my videos to show up in this new format. Now, since this video has two people speaking, Opus automatically made a split to fit the both of us in this frame. There's even options for three or four people. Or I can just choose fill here to focus on one person or fit so we can see the whole horizontal video. But of course that's not all. On the preview window, I can click and drag around the video to change its size and position. Using the timeline below, I can even split clip and move them individually. Now, right under the layout options is the option to let Opus generate B-rolls to place on top of the videos itself. Now I can choose to use stock footage or I can have AI generate B-roll for me. Currently the AI option isn't fully launched, so I'm going to have to join the waitlist to get access to it, but I'm very excited to try that out. For now, let's stick with the stock footage. So after waiting for a few seconds, we got some B-roll. If I don't like any of them, I can click on the small bar in the timeline and I'll be able to see what the AI search for to get this footage. I can even search here for a replacement so I'm not forced to use whatever it picks for me. Below this, I also have the option to let Opus automatically place emojis for me, which is nice. But remember, we could also do this manually back in the captions tab. And talking about captions, the hot thing right now, here's where I can fully adjust my animating captions. So I can pick a preset from the big creators like Think Media has a preset here, which is super cool. And actually, I think we should get a Premiere Gal preset in here, Opus. Or I can customize each aspect with the options below. I can change the animation style, some of the colors, the font, and much more. So the last option is adding an image overlay. So I can place my logo on screen or maybe a subscribe button if I wanted to. And for me, this is what Opus excels at, customizability. Now, I also wanna point out that I recently reviewed Riverside's magic clip feature, which like Opus can generate highlights from a long video, but it doesn't include all of the trend info that Opus has, nor does it have nearly as many editing controls, but it does have basic cutting animating captions, and text overlays. I also wanna mention I recently tried out Munch, which is also a competitor, and it also has trend info like Opus, but not as many editing tools. And it doesn't have export to Premiere Pro, which is one of my favorite features of Opus. So let's talk about that next. So if you wanna use Opus as a starting point and then you wanna edit the video further in Premiere Pro, hit on export as XML, and Opus will give us this zip file to work with. So once extracted, inside I'll find the XML file that I can throw into any empty Premiere Pro project. And everything I need will then populate inside of Premiere. So this is very interesting. The captions actually come as a GIF file. So make sure that your captions are correct before you export because then you need to go back to Opus, change the spelling, and then re-export it as an XML. GIF files render faster, but I think it would be cool to have the option to export the captions as MoGrid files, motion graphics templates. So that's something that I would recommend to Opus to consider for Premiere Pro users. So that way we can edit the captions directly in Premiere Premiere Pro and we don't have to go back to Opus. But in this folder, they also gave me an SRT file that has all of the caption subtitle information in it. So technically I could create my own captioning layer inside of Premiere Pro just using this file. So here in Premiere, let's open up the sequence so we can see everything laid out here in the timeline with our captions and our cut points. It's important to note that all of the video clips have the crop effect applied to it. So if I want to move any of the clips around, I need to get rid of it first. So what we can do is highlight all of the clips here, right click and remove attributes and make sure crop is selected under effects here and then we can hit okay. So now I can freely go into the timeline here and reposition all the videos. Other than that, I can now treat this as a normal Premiere Pro project and pretty much do anything I want. So I really think that having the option to export to Premiere Pro is really what makes Opus next level because I can use all of the tools that I normally use every day to make my edit 
as creative as I want it to be. So Opus is really like a starting point, right? That AI is helping you. It's like a rough cut assistant editor that's gonna prepare for the main editor to kind of polish the edit before it's ready to be posted. So overall, I think Opus is a level up in the world of video clipping tools, but it doesn't work perfectly for all types of content. For example, if your video has a ton of graphics on it, it may not look that great in Opus to have all those graphics kind of half on the screen. So you might have to export a clean version of your video to upload to Opus first. Also, depending on what videos you do, it still might be easier just to sit down with your phone and record a 60 second recap of what's going on and then edit it yourself. It really just depends on the content. And remember, it's important to choose the tools that work best for your workflow. Not one size fits all. There's no need to just jump on the bandwagon just because everybody else is doing it if it doesn't fit the kind of content that you're making. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about Opus and video clipping tools like this in general? One thing for certain is that we're definitely going to see a lot more short form content like this, but remember to try Try to make your content unique because if we see more and more of the same sort of styles, it just feels kind of repetitive, right? So that's why it's more important than ever to stay creative. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye.